is an alternative to IRB. It gives you a prompt for executing Ruby code, but it's also loaded with a lot more features. Here let me show you how it works and how you can integrate it into your Rails applications. Now installation is as simple as gem install pry, and you might want to add the pry doc gem in there as well. I'll show you that in a bit. Now if you use RVM gem sets, you might want to install pry so it's available globally across all gem sets. To do that you can use RVM gem set use and then pass in global here, and that way it'll switch to the global gem set, install, install the same gem in here, and then it will uh, make it available across all uh, gem sets. Now once you have pry installed, you can use it with the pry command, just like you would IRB, and you can execute Ruby code inside of here, and it works just like you expect. Now there's a lot more you can do inside of here, but first let me show you how you can set it up in a Rails app. So let's say we have the classic blogging application with an article model. And when I run Rails console inside of this app, it's going to use IRB in the background. But the question is, how do we switch over to pry? To do this, you can run the pry command, but tell it to require the config environment file. This way it'll load up the full Rails environment here. As you can see, we have access to our article model, just like we do in the console. So now that pry is set up, let's take a look at some of the features. If you type in the help command, you'll get a list showing all of the commands that pry provides. Now the two commands you'll probably use most often are the cd and the ls commands, so let's start off with those. Now the cd command will change your current scope. So if we say cd article, it's going to move into the article class. You can see if we run self, we're actually inside of the article class here. So you can call any class method you want in here, for example first, and that will be returning the first article just like we called article dot first. It'll do the same thing. Now you can cd into any object you want, so we can say cd first, and that'll actually take us into the first article, so self will now be that first article. We can fetch the name just like that. You could even cd into a string such as name, uh, call methods on this, uh, it works just like you expect. Now pry keeps track of where you've gone, and you can see this by calling the nesting command, and you can see here a list of objects that we've gone into. And if you type an exit, that will pop you out back into the previous object. So now we're back into our article class here, our actual article object. If we exit out again, now that will take us to the class. Now the ls command is used for listing variables and methods. So by default it's just going to list all the variables inside our current scope, which is the article class. Now some pry commands support flags, and you can get a list of them by passing the dash h option here, and you can see all the various options you can pass on to the ls command. So we could pass in the dash m option, for example, to get a list of methods inside this class, or we can use the dash capital M to get a list of instant method, instance methods uh, for this class. You can also pass any object or class into here to get a list of methods based off of that object instead of the current scope. Now another awesome command is the show doc command. Now let's say for example that uh, you see here we have a method under array called uh, in groups of, and what if I want to figure out how that works? I can call show doc array in groups of, and then that will show me the documentation for that method. Now I can even call this on objects directly. For example here, uh, inside of the article class, I can call all to get an array of all the article records, and I can call in groups of directly on here, and that will show me the same documentation but through the all uh, method call. Another handy command is the show method command, which will uh, actually show us the contents of the method. Uh, so we can do in groups of. Oh, by the way, we have, as you can see here, auto completion. So we can just hit tab and that will complete it for us. And so if we do uh, show method for in groups of method, you can see this will actually show us the contents of that method, the actual source code. And along those same lines, we have this edit method command where we can pass in a method. So in groups of. And then when we execute this, it will actually open up the file in your editor and take you directly to that line. Really awesome feature here. Now you can also run shell commands by prefixing them with a period. For example, if we type period.ls, that's actually going to run the ls shell command and not the one inside of pry. For example, here it'll list 
all the files in our current directory. You could run cat here, uh, list the contents of a file, and so on. Pry is also useful for debugging. For example, let me go into an article object here first. And so we're inside of an article object, and inside of here I have a method called word count. And this is supposed to return how many words there are inside the content of the article. But you can see that it always returns zero, even though we do have content inside of our article. So for some reason, it's not counting the words properly. Well, let's look inside of here by using the edit method command. Let's check out that word count method. So here's what that word count method looks like. And at any point in the code, we can just call binding.pry and then close this out. And that will take us back to pry where we can try calling the word count method again. And now it stops right where we had the binding.pry line. So we have access to all the local variables here. So we can say words and it's an empty array. So for some reason, our regular expression isn't working right for scanning the content. And you can see inside of here, it looks like we have two backslashes instead of one in the regular expression. So we can edit that method again and then remove that extra backslash, take out the pry call. And now our word count method, well, it works as expected. Awesome. Now, sometimes you need to debug a problem through the controller or view layer of your application and not necessarily through the console. Well, pry can help with this too. The first thing you'll need to do is go into your gem file and add pry inside of there, but only inside of the development group. And then run the bundle command and then start up your server. And then wherever in your application you want to debug, such as inside of our articles controller index method here, you can just add a call to binding.pry just like we did earlier. And then inside of the browser, if we hit reload here, you can notice that it's stuck trying to load the page here. But you can see inside the terminal that we started our server, we have a pry prompt here that stopped at that binding call and we can inspect any of the variables that we want here, make sure it all looks good. And then we can say exit all to uh, continue the uh, process. And then it will just continue loading the page in the browser. So that's how you can debug Rails apps through Pry. So that's it for this episode on Pry, a really awesome gem. I encourage you to check out the wiki documentation for more information because there's a lot that I didn't cover here. And also check out the screencast because there's one by Josh Cheek that uh, is definitely worth checking out. It's really what got me interested in Pry to begin with. So I encourage you to uh, check this one out. He goes through a little bit more than I do here. Well, that's it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.